There has been a response from Hamas to the hostage deal. We're currently reviewing that response and we're discussing it with our partners in the region. Director Burns, as you know, is there and he's working this in real time on the ground. I won't be able to comment any further on this until we know where things stand. I hope you can understand that. I know everybody's curious about what's in this response, what the Israeli reaction to it is. I'm just not going to get ahead of the process. We want to get these hostages out. We want to get a ceasefire in place for six weeks. We want to increase humanitarian assistance. And the last thing that I want to do is say anything at this podium that's going to put that process at risk. Regardless, as we've said before, we still believe that reaching an agreement is the absolute best outcome, not only for the hostages, but for the Palestinian people. And we're not going to stop working to that outcome. Now, as you know, the president talked with Prime Minister Netanyahu this morning. The call lasted about 30 minutes and was constructive. The president reaffirmed his message on Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day. The two leaders discussed the shared commitment of Israel and the United States to remember the six million Jews who were systematically targeted and slaughtered in the Holocaust, one of the darkest chapters in human history, and to forcefully act against anti-Semitism and all forms of hate-fueled violence. Now, of course, the two leaders spoke about our efforts to secure the hostage deal, including through these ongoing talks today. During the call, at the President's urging, Prime Minister Netanyahu agreed to ensure that the Karim Shalom crossing is back open for humanitarian assistance for those in need. And I also want to take a moment to address the latest reports now out of Rafah, which was also a topic of discussion on the, on the call. I'll reiterate again that we cannot and we will not speak for IDF operations, but we've made clear our views about operations in Rafah that could potentially put more than a million innocent people at greater risk. During his call with Prime Minister Netanyahu, the President again made this clear. He also made clear that we continue to believe that the hostage deal is the best way to avoid that sort of an outcome while securing the release of those hostages. And as I said, those conversations continue. Uh, just one more thing. President Biden uh, hosted His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan for lunch at the White House that probably wrapped up here just recently. They discussed the strong partnership between the United States and Jordan. They also spoke about the situation in Gaza, of course, including efforts to secure the hostage deal and to get more humanitarian assistance into the civilians of Gaza. Now, we're going to have a more uh, detailed readout of that conversation uh, here very, very soon. Just don't have it right now, but you'll be seeing it uh, shortly. As far as you can tell, which proposal did Hamas accept? I'm not going to get into that, Steve. And is the issue over how long a ceasefire would last? Again, you're asking me for the parameters around the response and the deal itself, and I'm just not going to do that. Lastly, Israel has called on people in, in Rafah to evacuate. Is, does that presage a full-scale assault? What, what do we see? As I said in my opening statement, I'm not going to speak for IDF operations or their military intentions and plans. They should be the ones to answer those kinds of questions. What I can only reiterate is that we've been consistent, and the President was consistent again this morning, that we don't support ground operations in Rafa that would put the majority or even any of the, the, the civilians there at any greater risk. We want to see their safety and security allowed for and factored in. Um, noting your caveats at the top, are you able to say whether Hamas was agreeing to something that had been discussed over the last several days? Again, without getting into the details of it, and Director Burns is still talking to partners about this, um, uh, there have been ongoing negotiations and talks here for weeks. Uh, and the director traveled recently to see if we can't bring this thing home. Um, and again, without speaking about the details of the response by Hamas, I think it's safe to conclude that that response came as a result or at the end of these uh, continued discussions that Director Burns was part of. And when do you think you'll have a better sense of what is happening? When will you get a readout from Director Burns later today, early tomorrow? I don't know. The President has been briefed on uh, uh, on uh, the response. He's aware of where the situation and where the process is. What you're asking me is, like, when are we going to get, like, a final, you know, what did the answer? Yeah, yeah uh, final we have table slap here. Um, there is a there there is a process that has that that has 
been worked in the past and will be worked this time. You get a response by Hamas, we're going to have to evaluate that. We're going to see what's in it. Um, certainly, uh, the Israelis get it, ha must have a chance to look at this uh, and to evaluate it. Uh, and Director Burns, as, as we speak, literally as you and I are talking, are having these conversations with partners in the region. I, you know, it, it would be great. I'm sure we'd all like to have an answer as soon as possible, but I just don't want to get ahead of that process. I understand you don't want to get into the specifics here, but is it your understanding that this is Hamas's final offer? I mean, is there still room to negotiate here? I think it's going to depend on our evaluation and the Israelis' evaluation of the response and where we go from here.